We my modern dragon kin post chaos dragons didn't go for revealing our names to our own kind, let alone humans. Now such as dragon slaying warlocks, boyfriends. And not having anything better to do with myself and having not a clue what my class schedule was, my name or student number I exited the toilet stall, tidied myself up in front of the mirror, and noted my glowing slitted reptilian eyes for the first time. Oh, I said, no wonder that nice human guy could tell I was a witchworm. I fished around in my rucksack, found a pair of talon-framed sunglasses, and tried to hide my obvious draconic nature with them. I racked my brains trying to remember where White Oak's library had been in months earlier when I was a boy student in there. It wasn't easy to match that past uh, blueprint to this present reality. The hallways were all skewed, but connected to each another like a maze. In the end, I had to ask a janitor to lead me to the there. Once in the library, I went straight to the help desk and was pleased to see that the librarian had the same dragon eyes as I did. Her voice was also deep and throaty and animalistic like mine which I found comforting after having to endure the sweet, gentle, but alien human voices and on my eardrums. She was growling and hissing, however, at some human witch who was giving her a hard time, and I began to feel my own invisible instincts become a bit more visible as I tried to overcome the urge I had to spread my wings, my neck, mane, and to hiss at her and to prepare for combat. And the librarian must have seen me go into crouching, spitting dragoness mode because she suddenly turned and headed back into the reshelving stacks behind the help desk. With her departure from my personal space, I felt the rage building in me snuff out, and I quickly headed away from the help desk. I headed for the spot where I thought I'd find books on my new species, the mythological creatures section and was shocked to discover not a book with the word dragon there. All the other creatures, centaurs, unicorns, griffins, and selkies were there, but not a trace of serpents, dragons, wyverns, or basilisks, or tetzel worms. I slowly dawned on me that this was because dragons were in flesh and blood in this realm rather than mythological and probably had similar concerns and biological issues to their nearest competitor, the human species. I pulled out those dragon book girl growing up booklets and flipped through the one titled... Uh, Mummy, I've got 99 ribs. And on the cover showed a dragonkin toddler pointing at her own rib cage whilst playing in on a blanket on a bed with a snake. I immediately noticed that they, she appeared to be 
have bronze hair and the slitted eyes. But quickly, as I flipped through the book, I noticed that although they had good solid rib cages, they had the 99 ribs was quite a literal truth. We kind had many of the features of a highly evolved snake skeleton complete with a plentiful supply of thin ribs where humans would have had one thick one as well as changes to our skull and other and jawbone. And so I get on looking back in the book stacks for the books on medical issues with Dragon Girls.